Hey everybody and welcome to the Very Vera Show. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. And you know, Thanksgiving is right around the corner and I know we're all going, ah, you know, what am I gonna make? And we all have our traditional favorites that we've grown up with. You know, you can't serve Thanksgiving dinner without A, B, C, and D, and of course the turkey. So I want to help you with things that maybe you haven't tried before. Maybe you've got a great aunt that always bought the dressing or the stuffing and you've been assigned that particular job this year. So I've got a great dressing recipe that we're gonna do. I'm also going to do a creamed spinach dish that is garnished with fried eggs on the top that is absolutely decadent. You're gonna love that. And then finally, I'm going to do a twist on that traditional sweet potato. You know, I love the one that has the marshmallows and the brown sugar and the pecans, but we're going to do a little something different today with a sweet potato. So let's get started with the dressing first. Um, ahead of schedule, I went ahead and fried some of that fresh market applewood smoked bacon, and the aroma of that in and of itself is going to be one reason to cook it, because the house just smells wonderful. So I went ahead and got that fried, and I'm going to use those bacon drippings to saute my onions and celery, so just finely chopped celery and onions. And the reason I like to do this is I love to get a little bit of that bacon flavor into the dressing, and also because it's just a wonderful way to limp down those vegetables with something that adds a little bit more flavor instead of just putting salt and pepper. So I have that all done. As you can see, it's just really nice and tender and the bacon is actually going to be used in a few minutes for the sweet potato dish. So I killed two birds with one stone right here by getting the bacon done ahead and using the drippings to saute my onions and, and celery. All right. The thing that makes this dressing a little bit unusual is I'm using three different kinds of cornbread. First and foremost, my absolute favorite is the Fresh Market's sweet cornbread. If you love sweet cornbread, you are going to want to stock up at the Fresh Market on that. I absolutely love it. And then who has it made Jiffy cornbread? And I always have that in the pantry too. So I'm also going to crumble some Jiffy cornbread to give it a little bit more of a savory feel to it. And then finally, the bagged um, cornbread uh, stuffing mix, a little bit crunchier and a little bit more savory. I'm going to put that together. You're going to need a really big bowl to do this and just get all of that mixed in. Then I'm going to add a little bit of rice and it's um, a cup of cooked rice and this is one of those times where I highly recommend using something that comes in one of those boiler bags that you can just put in the microwave and you can multitask as you're doing this recipe. Now all of my dry ingredients, I've got pepper, salt, poultry seasoning, and remember to always check those expiration dates too when you're pulling these seasonings that you don't use very often, and then fresh sage. And now I'm going to add in my cooked vegetables. Oh, and it's just smell. You know what? This really gets me in the mood for Thanksgiving for sure because these are the aromas that just remind you that that holiday is coming up. I'm going to add four beaten eggs and then chicken broth. And again, I love to use the Fresh Market brand on that. And if you're not planning to use the entire amount, be sure to take your Sharpie and write the day that you opened it on the container so that you know for sure how long you've had it when you go to use it again. Now what you want to do here is just make sure that you've got everything very well incorporated. And it's going to be gooey. It's going to be really runny and gooey. But of course as it sits, that moisture is going to continue to get thick in with all of these dried ingredients. I've sprayed a 9 by 13 inch pan with just some pan spray. And this is something that you can do several days ahead. And just let it sit in the refrigerator until it's time to cook. So I think once I add the rest of this in, it's going to be just as gooey as I want it. And 
just by nature of how you like it salty or sweet, you can change the ingredients to match your particular needs. And as always, our recipes are on our website at veryvera.com. So come back with me in just a few minutes because we're going to get started on a cream spinach that has a delightful garnish on the top. Welcome back, and while we were away during the break, that three cornbread dressing just went into a 350 degree oven. And remember now, it's a little loose, so it's gonna take about 50 to 60 minutes for it to cook. And during our Ask Vera segment today, I'm gonna give you some tips about the logistics of managing all this. This takes this long, and this takes that long to get that Thanksgiving dinner on the table with all the dishes hot and ready to serve. So I've gotten started on the spinach dish, and again during the break, I got my olive oil heated in the pan with a little bit of minced garlic and sauteed down three bags of spinach. And from what you have left over after you had a pan this tall of spinach, that's what you're looking like at the end. And I really like to do mine where it's not just completely cooked to death because I want the cream to kind of stick to the leaves of the spinach. So I'm just adding a little bit at a time and taking my spoon and going down to the bottom and stirring it around. If you've got a great big um, Dutch oven, um, that also works really well for this. I'm using a deep Bialetti fry pan that I use for lots of different things. It has a great lid to go on top of it. So whenever you're doing something that you want to kind of steam, this pan works really well for that. All right, so just one handful or two at a time and getting this done. I also got started on the cream sauce for this. And I have a, the, the best story about cream sauce because growing up, you know, that ham that was left over after Thanksgiving too, always ended up back on the dinner table the week following with chopped up ham and eggs in a cream sauce that was served over toast. And I know many of you out there in the audience are remembering that dish as well. And I always thought that cream sauce was so delicious. And I remember um, after I first got married calling my mom to ask her, how did you make that sauce that had the ham and eggs in it? So very simple, melt butter and it's equal portions of butter to flour and you just cook it down until it gets nice and golden brown and then add your milk slowly and you can do either whole milk or half and half or 2%, whatever you have. And this is one of those tips I like to remind you to always have a can of evaporated milk in the cabinet because you never know when it might come in handy, you know, to make something like a cream sauce. Uh, I love spinach actually just sauteed, but a lot of times I like to serve it um, with a cream sauce. So I've got the finished cream sauce over here that I'm just kind of stirring one more time. And you're looking for a consistency that looks a little bit like this. It's coating my spatula, but it's not so th um, thick that I can't stir it really well. Almost looks like velvet. Just really great. And I've just about got the spinach where I want it. Where you still have some leaves that are whole, it's not completely cooked to death. So I'm gonna turn this off now and I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese to my white sauce. It gets better by the minute, doesn't it? And just whip that around. And while that's melting down, I'm gonna add some salt and pepper to this. Just a little bit of salt, because remember your butter that's in your white sauce has salt in it as well. All right, I'm gonna add back in what I had earlier. 
And this is one of those times when the microwave might come in extremely handy, which I will probably do for this right before I serve it. And at this point, you could either wait and hold that cream sauce off until the very last minute when you're ready to serve it so it's nice and fluffy and, and good. Or you can go ahead and add it now and not stir it all the way. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pour this delicious sauce over the top of this. Look at that. Oh, man. Oh, I love this vegetable. And maybe with enough of the cheese in there, you can get those children to eat some spinach, too. They need to for those strong bones like Popeye. All right, so this is going to get that lid put on it. We're going to let it sit, and when we come back, we're going to get started on a sweet potato dish with a twist, and then at the very end, I'm going to show you a beautiful garnish for this dish. Ask Vera is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. Carol Horsley in Aiken writes, can you give me any tips about logistics for Thanksgiving cooking and planning? Well, Carol, I've got some tips for you. How in the world are we going to have the turkey done, the dressing, and all of the other specialty dishes that you always do for Thanksgiving? Well, let's start by looking at that menu and seeing what you can do right here on top of the stove. You know, many of your dishes can get started here. Lots of casseroles only take an average of 20 minutes to cook at the last minute, so this would be a great place to start. Another thing you want to do is consider the length of time for all the dishes that have to go in the oven and determine how you can rotate. With my Electrolux oven, I've got the opportunity to use the convection bake feature, which allows the heat to rotate around the dishes. This way, I can put many things in at one time. But if you have a standard oven, you can just rotate. And then finally, a warming drawer. A warming drawer really comes in handy at the last minute. Carol, I hope that answered your question. And you send your questions to askvera at NBC26.tv. And I want to remind you that on November 21st and 22nd, the Augusta Ballet is holding its holiday tour of home, highlighting some of our best interior designers and florists. For more information, go to augustaballet.org. Welcome back, and with Thanksgiving right around the corner, hopefully today you're getting some great ideas for things to do for Thanksgiving. You know, let's just have one dish on the table that's new this year. I know my family loves all of our favorites. So sweet potatoes are generally on the menu for Thanksgiving, and this particular recipe is a twist to our traditional sweet potato casserole that has all the the great brown sugar and pecans and marshmallows. So I'm going to start with some frozen orange juice concentrate in my Dutch oven. I've got butter, brown sugar, fresh rosemary, and kosher salt. I'm just going to mix that together. And prior to coming on during the break, I got all of my sweet potatoes peeled. And you're going to cut those into one inch circles. And then depending on the width of the sweet potato, some of them you can cut in half and some of them you can cut into fourths. But I'm telling you, the aroma of this is so great because of the, the orange juice. It just is almost like you've got orange zest down in there. So now I'm going to take all of my cut up sweet potatoes and just add them in to the Dutch oven and just get them good and coated. And then you're just going to leave it alone. You're just going to put the lid on it and let it cook low until these are fork tender. All right, so I'm going to turn my heat down, put my lid on it, and then these are the ones that I did ahead, so they're just 
the perfect texture, um, enough to fill up this serving bowl. And the mixture that I started earlier is what's in the bottom of this pan that I did ahead. So now it's gotten nice and gooey, kind of. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that. And then just a little bit of cornstarch. And I'll add that a, about a teaspoon at a time until it's just where I want it to be. And then you're gonna pour this over the sweet potatoes right before you serve it. So in terms of certainly thinking in on your menu of what you want to do for Thanksgiving. We all have our favorites, but I love as a former home ec teacher to, you know, suggest that you think about your colors of all your different dishes. Certainly something that's orange is gonna just pop out on that table. It's probably gonna match your centerpiece. It'll be great along with all the greens and browns from the turkey. But the other thing that's important is to think about some dishes that don't have to be baked in the oven. So this is one of the reasons I selected this today. And again, this Violetti cookware just makes cooking these things so easy because it's, they're so easy to clean up. Nothing sticks to the pan. All right, so this looks just about right. All right, as this cooks, this can be done in this Dutch oven. It can also be done in a crock pot. If again, the eyes on the top of your stove are getting completely full of things that you're going to be cooking that day, utilize that crock pot. That's just another thing on the counter that won't be in the way. But I'm going to take this, pour this directly over those yummy sweet potatoes and it almost becomes a garnish in itself. So you can take it, mix it up, or just let it soak through a little bit at a time. It's like the people that want a lot are gonna grab what's on top. The people that want just a little bit of that sauce will grab a little bit on the bottom. All right, so this is ready to go on the buffet table. And when we come back from the break, we're gonna get this whole buffet set up. I'm gonna show you how to garnish everything at the end. I'm gonna put those fried eggs on top of the spinach. So come back with us in just a few minutes. I'm glad you joined me today and I hope that I have assisted you in some of your Thanksgiving planning and preparation with some of these great recipes and as always our recipes are available at veryvera.com. So while we were away during the break I got the eggs fried for the garnish for the top but as always I had a little boo-boo so you know never let anything go to waste. I'm actually going to add these scrambled eggs to part of this mixture making it even better than I originally thought. So as we said I'm just going to take this mixture that I let sit with that cream sauce and stir it in very lightly at the last minute and you can just see how great and creamy that looks. I'm going to add that to my serving bowl. Oh, this just smells delicious and I love spinach as another green vegetable for Thanksgiving. All right, now I'm going to incorporate the scrambled eggs into it. Came up with a new recipe today. And then we're gonna to top it with the fried eggs. So it really makes a really pretty garnish for the top. All right, so you've got a great what looks like a casserole, but actually was done on top of the stove. So I'm gonna bring that down and we're gonna get started on the presentation of everything. So we've got 
the dressing that we did and look how golden brown and delicious it is. I've got the fresh sage that I'm gonna garnish on the top of that. So always leave just a little bit of your fresh um, garnish material so that you can use it at the end to, to decorate. I'm gonna put my spinach right here. I've got a place all wedged out in my buffet display for that. And then the sweet potatoes are really gonna be great. I've got a mixture of fresh Italian parsley, orange zest, and garlic that I'm going to use on the top. And I just mix that up in a bowl and just, you know, let some of that just be on the top. And as people go through the line, you could have that actually sitting on the side if you wanted to. Then I've got the applewood smoked bacon that we cooked earlier, remember, when we sauteed the onions and celery. So that is now going to become a garnish. And if this is not a most, one of the most beautiful side dishes for Thanksgiving, and again, gets you out of that oven when you're already logistically trying to manage how you're going to get all of this accomplished. So as you can see, we have got a gorgeous display. And how in the world did I do that? I did that by utilizing a lot of you know, things that are, I've already had for quite a number of years. The garland is artificial, of course, but if you pop in other things that are real, it really starts to bounce. Then my turkey, I've used just things that are out of the refrigerator, the carrots, the potatoes, the apples, the fresh parsley, just looks great. And then I love to use this little wooden stand to kind of give it a, a boost. I want to dive right into this dressing and kind of give you an idea of what it looks like on the inside because it is moist and spectacular with a great gravy that you're already going to be doing with those turkey drippings that is going to be just fantastic oh me all all of those different cornbreads are there it's just going to be so good and remember no matter what you do do it in good taste please be sure to join us again next weekend for the very vera show Thank you.